37 years ago, Buick released the 86 Riviera, equipped with a 9-inch touchscreen that they called the Graphic Control Center, with that classic green and black war games look. By 1990, it was axed. But now, 97% of new cars globally have at least one touchscreen. And they suffer from a lot of the same problems the 86 Riviera dealt with. So why is it that basically every new car has a bigger and bigger touchscreen? That sucks. Here's a hint. They aren't making them for you. Almost everyone hates touchscreens in cars. Are we losing focus and veering off the road? And we can pinpoint it to two main pitfalls, user experience and safety. In 2012, Tesla made waves with the Model S. Yeah, the Model S was ridiculously fast, especially for an EV. But the most eye-catching thing? The massive 17-inch touchscreen and lack of buttons and knobs. Some even called it the tablet on wheels. That year, the Model S won Motor Trend Car of the Year and is the talk of the auto industry. It established Tesla as the leader in automotive design and software and set new precedents for what the car of the future would look like. Suddenly, the tech advanced car became sexier than the 8-cylinder 650 horsepower car. And other automakers followed suit. Big touchscreens are cool, right? It means the car is modern and advanced. Tesla said so. You will not be sorry, or maybe you will. It won't be boring. <laughs> so, what's the problem? Well, automakers are not tech companies. Think about how much energy and hours tech companies put into UI design. And I'd argue that a piece of tech in a car needs more time for R&D and QA because of the added element of, you know, driving. Okay, first time in a Tesla, just pick this thing up. God, I'm so nervous to crash this thing. Don't tell my boss that this whole video is just an excuse for me to drive a Tesla for the first time. I mean, these are crazy to navigate as you're driving. Now, Tesla does have voice control, which a lot of people use and rely on, but this video is about touchscreens, not voice control. Okay, I can slide the screen to change the temperature, I think. Okay, how do I go back to navigation? Oh no. Certain things might not be easy to get to, but I can change my honking noise to a fart. For 100 years, automakers focused on the mechanical side of car development, and now they're implementing consumer electronics into their design, something they were not in the business of for most of their existence. If I explain to you know the listeners how crazy our software system is and why it's so difficult for legacy car companies to get software right. The problem is the software are all written by, you know, 150 different companies and they don't talk to each other. And so even though it says Ford on the front, I actually have to go to Bosch to get permission to change their seat control software. Car companies have a written software like this ever. Then there's the issue of safety and distraction. Ironically, touchscreens only work well if you dedicate your visual attention towards them. Can't imagine doing this while driving, but I guess you're probably not supposed to. They rely more on your vision than your touch. And driving is an inherently visual task. So why would it make sense to add more visual tasks through infotainment when so many car accidents are already caused by distracted driving? This is just, it's, this is a lot. A Swedish study tested 11 modern cars and a 2005 Volvo and timed how long it would take to perform a few simple tasks. By far, the Volvo was the easiest to understand and operate, with all of the tasks completed within 10 seconds. The Tesla Model 3 took 23 and a half seconds, and the BMW iX took 30.4 seconds. And your chances of a crash double if you take your eyes off the road for more than two seconds. Then there's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which has a better user interface than what the car company is giving you, but also feels like the car company saying, here, you do it, to Apple and Android. One study proved that drivers picking music through CarPlay and Android Auto had slower reaction times than drivers that were high, on the pot. Also, you're not allowed to use your phone while you're driving. So why is a mounted iPad any different? With physical buttons and knobs, you can look at the road, feel for a volume knob, adjust it, and know roughly how much you adjusted it, even in a car you've never driven. With touchscreens, there is no tactile or haptic feedback to let you know that you turn the volume up a bit or put your heated seats on. I remember in my 07 Altima not having to take my eyes off the road to do any task on the dash. Plus, some features are buried behind multiple menus, taking your eyes off the road for longer and longer. Again, no clue how to change that mirror right now, even though I just did it 10 seconds ago. Mirror. No, I just folded the mirrors. 
<laughs> and there is zero oversight or regulation for how long a task should require you to take your eyes off the road. So car companies can make their infotainment systems more complex, bigger, and more distracting without anyone telling them not to do so. So these automakers are being forced to cosplay as tech companies because we all expect our cars to have a bigger touchscreen, better compatibility, and more automation. So if these touchscreens are not easy to use and they make our streets less safe, why are they in every new car? These days, it's actually a lot cheaper for automakers to put in a touchscreen that controls almost everything than it is to put in physical buttons and knobs. They ask suppliers to make the buttons and the dashboards for them. If you can just spec a single component, it's a lot cheaper and easier to deal with a single supplier and all you need to do is build the software. Tons of buttons and knobs also makes it a lot more expensive for car companies to do a facelift, which is basically updates made every year to modernize the vehicle and boost interest in the car again, without having to redesign the model from the ground up. If you have a bunch of complexity on the dashboard, you will have to renew all of that again. Instead, you can just tell your software team like, hey, just update the UI, add some new features, etc." It takes a lot of time and money to engineer buttons, knobs, and switches. Plus, having the wiring that runs to and from all of the different physical controls. And it all needs to last the lifetime of the car. Doing all that via code and software is much cheaper, faster, and significantly simplifies the manufacturing process. One screen that controls everything really is the cheapest way to build out an interior, but it's marketed to us as tech forward and advanced. When in reality, it's really just a sneaky way of cost cutting. Capitalism pops off again, ladies and gentlemen. Most cars now have touchscreens because they help increase margins, drive profits, and improve marketability. Not because it has good value for you, the customer, and cars haven't gotten any cheaper. So maybe Tesla was trying to change the game in car interiors with the 17 inch tablet in the Model S, or maybe they were just looking to save money on engineering and wiring for switches and knobs. So now what? Volkswagen, Honda, Hyundai, and Mazda have all announced that they're implementing buttons and knobs again for certain features, mostly due to backlash by drivers. The reality is, once you drive that new car off the lot, all you want and need is the basic features that cars have had for decades, and access to those features in a safe, fast, and convenient way. I think this phase of car design will be considered the in-between, where the tech hasn't caught up to the design, and the automation and ease of use are both absent. Once cars are truly autonomous, then touchscreens can be useful and fun. At that point, make the whole damn car a screen. I just don't think the AI and automation are there yet. Until then, I think we'll see things like voice command and gesture controls bridge the gap. Thank you so much for watching. I'm James with Morning Brew. Please subscribe with notifications on so you know every time we drop a new video.